Welcome to the Hampshire Hero Awards. The waiting is almost over, and very soon now we will be able to find out who our many readers and online followers have chosen as their heroes. It seems we've been reporting on the highs and lows of the pandemic on a daily basis for a very long time. But now, with what we hope is a much brighter future and prospect, it's time to look back on all those who have played their part in keeping our spirits up and provided support during the last year and a half. It's been our honour and privilege to hear such inspiring stories, and I must thank all our judges for working so diligently through all the entries. We have a lot to pack into the next 60 minutes, so please let me get these proceedings underway by introducing our host for this very special event. He is a man you'll be familiar with for his courage and endeavour. I've had the pleasure of speaking with him in preparation for these awards and, know what, it just takes a few minutes to understand why he's frequently in demand for inspirational speaking. He is Simon Weston, CBE. Thank you, Bill. That's very kind. How do you judge awards like this? Well, let me start by giving my own personal thanks to all those who have been nominated today for the sacrifices you have made. We know that only some of you will be mentioned, but let me reassure you that we recognize the qualities you have and all the work you have done over the past many months. For this, we salute you. I feel really honored to be asked to present these awards. For me, the heroes in life are the ordinary people who step up in the moment. When the bomb hit my ship in the Falklands, there were people around me whose actions I will remember until my dying day. Their bravery helped us to regain control of what was chaos. And thanks to the actions of one or two, my life was saved. I am so grateful to so many people, those on the ship, the Falklands nurses who are so rarely mentioned, and the airmen who comforted me on the 19 hours flight back to the UK. The heroes in my life are people you will have never heard of, and yet they mean so much to me that I have named my children after them. And that's why these awards are so important, because today you are going to hear the names of people you have never heard of. Now, I'm not saying that you have to name your children after them, but listen for a moment about the things they have done and consider just how important it is that we have people around us like them. Our doctors, nurses and other medics have never been tested as much as they have in these recent times and we will probably never know the true debt we owe them. Today, we will thank and honour some who have saved lives and returned loved ones safely to their families. We will also thank them for comforting the ones who never went home. At the same time, we know other key workers have played their role on the front line. They have been important cogs in the community who have helped the medics and the 999 services to do what they do best. And then, there are the other heroes who we find in every corner of our lives, people who also deserve the spotlight, if only for one moment. And that's what these awards are about. One other thing to mention before the main event begins, I would like to thank all those businesses and organisations who have put their hands in their pockets to ensure these awards take place. Back in January, I sat on my couch in Cardiff and recorded a video asking for their support, not knowing if anyone would come forward, but they have stepped up so generously. And I would like to add my thanks to all the sponsors. Each will feature as the awards take place today, but let me step aside briefly so that our principal sponsor can say a few words. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for letting Utilita be part of the inaugural Hampshire Hero Awards as principal sponsor and thank you for giving us the opportunity to celebrate the exceptional achievements of ordinary people throughout this wonderful county. It's an honour and a privilege. 
For myself and my colleagues to hear so many remarkable stories from all walks of life and across generations has been truly inspirational. Each nominee is a winner and deserves all the recognition they get. Just like tonight's attendees, Utilita always wants to go the extra mile to make a lasting difference to the communities it serves. This is what sets us apart, just as the bravery, determination, kindness and spirit shown by the nominees here today during what has been a testing year sets them apart too. Good luck to every single nominee. You're all heroes. I hope you're applauding at home because the organisers at the Daily Echo, Hampshire Chronicle, Romsey Advertiser, Basingstoke Gazette and Andover Advertiser really appreciate all the support they have received. We are delighted to have such an important principal sponsor and you will be hearing more from them when we announce the Hero of the Year. Now then, these awards are divided into three main categories and each category will be introduced by someone else who I am sure will be a familiar face to you. So let me hand over to our first celebrity guest. Hi everyone, thanks Simon and what a great idea to say a big thank you to all our local heroes. Oh, me, zoom, darling. My role here is to introduce the NHS category of which there must be thousands of deserving cases. My heartfelt thanks goes out to them all. Here we have awards for our healthcare team, individual healthcare professional and medical support. Let me hand you over, of course, to our category sponsor who will announce the first award. Tara Smith is delighted to be sponsoring this category, and it's a small token of our thanks to all of those who went above and beyond during the pandemic. Para Smith is a full service law firm based in the Central South, founded in 1818. We have a national outlook, reach and influence. Our purpose is to help our clients thrive and to navigate the challenges and opportunities life throws. Our history means our expertise is deep and our networks wide. We are independently recognised in each of our practice areas, which cover key aspects of personal and business life. The first award is for the healthcare team sponsored by Southampton Hospitals Charity, who will announce the winner. But first, over to Bill, who will outline those who have been shortlisted. Thank you, Helen. The finalists are Dr. Oliver Kramer, at a time before the COVID vaccination program for frontline staff was organized on the Isle of Wight, Dr. Kramer and the Newport Health Center realized that there was a real possibility due to its characteristics and required storage, vaccine supplied to the vaccination site were at risk of being wasted if not utilized by the time they expired. Dr. Kramer, who's actually a hospital anaesthetist, established a process where leftover vaccines could be given at short notice to healthcare and other emergency services workers. These were people who were eligible for a vaccine under the government's priority policy, but could not be vaccinated due to lack of a local vaccination scheme. A WhatsApp group named No Jab Wasted was created and shared between healthcare workers across the island. It led to over 200 healthcare and emergency service personnel having a vaccine who would otherwise still have been working unvaccinated. Staff on ICU and RICU, Southampton General Hospital. Kaylin Hadaru told us that her husband, David Fox, spent three weeks in Southampton General Hospital and that although he sadly passed away, the dedication, treatment and care he received was first class. She said it would be impossible to name just one person, so I'm nominating the nursing team and doctors on ICU and RICU. Hestia Care, Beer Hill House. Like so many care facilities, Hestia Care faced a change of circumstances right at the start of the pandemic. Their manager, Michelle Hart, described how frightening it was for staff after one of the residents was diagnosed as COVID positive. 
She said some cried and they all called their families, not knowing how long it would be before they could go home. But they were determined to do their best for their residents. Michelle said many at Beer Hill House thought they were lucky that they could still go home and do a weekly shop. What they didn't see was that many of the staff were banned from their own families. One carer lost both parents during the pandemic and still came to work. She said the conditions eventually eased and staff were able to see their families once more. But even so, each one of them has gone past the call of duty almost on a daily basis. To announce the name of the winner from Southampton Hospital Charity, Joint Interim Director Janine Thompson. Southampton Hospitals Charity was delighted to see all aspects of healthcare represented in the nominations and because of who we are, it was particularly important to have recognition for the staff in ICU and RICU at University Hospital Southampton. However, sacrifices have been made everywhere and our winner comes from another vital part of the support service that exists for the most vulnerable. Our winner is Hestia Care. Our second award in this category is the Individual Healthcare Professional, sponsored by the University of Winchester. The finalists are Megan Rayner. As a midwife, Megan came to the aid of a family friend when she heard the Salisbury mother and baby had been temporarily separated. Beth George, the mum, explained that her child had been born with an often fatal, very rare birth defect and had to be taken by ambulance alone to Southampton for further testing. Megan contacted Southampton where she was then a midwife and explained Beth's situation. The support they gave her and later personal help Megan gave to Beth using her own free time to buy vital supplies made a world of difference to the mum. Julie Brooks, University Hospital, Southampton. Julie is head of the infection prevention team at the University Hospital, Southampton, and has been truly amazing and inspirational through the pandemic. We are told she's being calm and pragmatic when changes to infection control practice were continually changing. They adapted with agility and always put patients and staff safety at the forefront because of Julie's leadership. Julie oversaw the management of outbreaks within the hospital swiftly, and as a result, they had lower rates of hospital acquired infection. Dr. Stephen Wimbush, Royal Hampshire County Hospital. Steve is the ICU clinical lead at the Royal Hampshire County Hospital. He led the team throughout the pandemic, working tirelessly to rapidly increase ICU capacity to 200% and working long physically and emotionally demanding shifts. In between planning and clinical shifts, he learned as much as he could about this new disease to help him and his team deliver outstanding care to all their patients. To tell you who the winner is, please let me introduce from the University of Winchester, Vice-Chancellor, the Reverend Professor Elizabeth Stewart. We are training a new generation of healthcare professionals in our Faculty of Health and Wellbeing. And we see at first hand the dedication, passion and resilience they bring to their vocations. In this most challenging of times, we think our healthcare professionals deserve the recognition and thanks that the Hampshire Awards provide. Our winner is someone who exemplifies the care and compassion that we associate with the NHS. And she is Megan Rayner. Our final award in this category is Medical Support, which is sponsored by Parker Bullen. There are so many people who make up the whole of our health and care sector, 
and we wanted to give everyone within it the opportunity to be recognised. The finalists are Parv and her pharmacy team, Boots Winchester. The pharmacy team at Boots in Winchester deserve recognition for the calm efficiency of their service to the community they serve. With face-to-face -face visits with GPs very restricted during the pandemic, the pharmacy team have excelled themselves as a continuing frontline medical help and advice service to all age groups, particularly the many drug-dependent users who are the most vulnerable. And then Carol Allen, COVID clinic. Carol Allen was nominated as a great example of those dealing at the front line for vaccines. Our nominator pointed out what an extremely stressful and exhausting role it was, and she described Carol as being such a good person who would not only help assist whenever needed, but would also treat everyone with respect. And finally, there is Jennifer Bryant. Jennifer from Central Healthcare has been nominated for her work as a senior carer. She's gone above and beyond to help her residents while managing her family at the same time. She also helped with fixing telephones so families could speak together through windows and does everything possible for residents to ensure that they are living their life as normally as possible. To announce the winner, please let me introduce you to one of the partners at Parker Bullen, Jason Evans. This past year has been one where many extraordinary people have done many extraordinary things and the support given to those needing medical assistance has touched probably every single one of us. Parker Bullen solicitors are proud to have been asked to support such a worthy award and whilst all of the nominees have been incredible, there has to be a winner and that is Jennifer Bryant. Well done to all of you. I mentioned earlier how important it was to have people you can trust around you. And I think we've all learned just what that means when your life could be on the line. Now on to our next category and someone else I am confident you will know to introduce them. It's all very impressive, isn't it? I have to say the judges must have had to work hard on making such difficult choices. Now, for the majority of you who've got better things to do than watch breakfast television in the morning, I'm Dr. Hilary Jones, a practicing GP, who also pimps himself out as health editor on ITV's breakfast show, Good Morning Britain. Now, until recently, there was this guy, what was his name? Um, uh, uh, Piers Morgan, I think it was. Yes, that's him, Piers Morgan. He was our anchor presenter. And yes, I know you must all be missing him tremendously. But I'm so pleased I was invited to introduce this next category, the Emergency Hero Awards, which recognises those who've done great things in the face of the unexpected. All of you, every single one of you, deserve recognition, and I'm immensely proud to call you my colleagues. Before we get to the awards, I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes reflecting on how this virus has impacted on all of us. It's a serious business, of course, and it will last a while longer, but we will get through it, and amongst the things that will help will be to be grateful for what we do have and to keep our sense of humour. I mean, for example, I think we can all agree that back in 2016, not a single person got the answer right to the question, where do you see yourself five years from now? And for those of you of a certain age, how many thought that after surviving all that unprotected sex in the 70s, 80s and 90s, that you might die from an unprotected handshake in 2020? Who would have thought that something like this could affect every facet of our lives? Going to the pub, the theatre, film and sport. Shopping is a different experience too. The masks, the social distancing, the hand sanitizer. At my local supermarket, they're still using temperature scanners. But I think those can affect your memory because I went in for bread, milk and sanitizer and came out with gin, wine and chocolate. And now I hear the European Medicines Agency have finally reached their conclusions about the link between clots and jabs. Apparently they've discovered that the EU have got all the clots and the UK have got all the jabs and I couldn't agree more. Seriously, above all, we've been proud to reflect the magnificent work which every single one of you has been involved in. We have in this country a wonderful health service that is complemented by an emergency service which is second to none. And as our judges have discovered, 
they in turn have some amazing support from the public. Now let me introduce you to our category sponsor, who will also announce the first award in this section. The University of Winchester is proud and delighted to sponsor the 999 Heroes Award. It's one where we're looking for people who were prepared to put themselves in the front line when others might step back. And we found some great candidates. Let me hand you over to Bill to tell you who the finalists are. Thank you, Elizabeth. The finalists are the Bishop's Waltham Community First Responders, made up of Andrew Brown, David Spackman, Jane Early, Peter Hurley, and Andy Clifton. This small group of volunteers gave outstanding service during the pandemic, putting their own lives at risk and providing emergency life-saving support before the arrival of the 999 ambulance crews. The responders were down to just five members at the start of the pandemic after other members stood down owing to age or medical conditions. These five maintain continuous 24-hour shifts for the surrounding area each day of the week without fail. Captain Carl Williams was nominated for the bravery he showed while off duty in disarming a gunman who threatened a crowd of shoppers in Southampton city centre. Captain Williams heard hysterical screaming before spotting a man pointing a firearm towards the petrified group of people. However, the soldier waited for his moment and then took the gunman to the ground. He disarmed him and pinned him down until police arrived. Then there is Bob Patton of Hampshire Fire and Rescue, who was praised after joining frontline medics in the intensive care unit at University Hospital Southampton. He is one of 27 Hampshire Fire and Rescue service staff who have stepped forward for the work across Hampshire. Bob was praised in a heartfelt letter written by the family of a 59-year-old COVID patient, Carol Woodley, who died after battling the virus for two weeks. Carol's family had placed notes by her hospital bedside saying who she was and what she liked. One of the notes said she always looked forward to seeing daffodils in the spring. Unable to bring in real or artificial flowers, Bob used his break to print and laminate photos of daffodils, which remained at Carol's bedside until she had passed away. To announce the winner, please welcome back from the University of Winchester, Vice-Chancellor, the Reverend Professor Elizabeth Stewart. There can be no doubting the bravery of our winner. When others might have seen a need to take flight, our winner found a way to deal with a highly dangerous situation. The winner of this award is Captain Carl Williams. The second award in this category is the In The Moment Award, and it is sponsored by Paris Smith. We have three finalists, Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance. They are a charity that relies entirely on donations from the communities that it serves. Last year, the doctors, specialist paramedics and pilots that make up the charity's critical care teams responded to 1,577 call-outs by Air and Road its second highest yearly total on record as it remained fully operational throughout the pandemic, providing vital support to the NHS. In April this year, the life-saving charity responded to its 10,000th mission by air. Then there is Martin Hansel and Tim Brennan. They were two men who helped rescue a driver moments before his crash car burst into flames. Learner driver Martin was driving to Stockbridge with his instructor Tim when they spotted a car had flipped onto its roof on the side of the road. The pair were flagged down by a passerby asking if they had a fire extinguisher. According to Martin, Tim did not think twice and managed to get the driver out of the car seconds before it was engulfed in flames. 
Martin and another lady at the scene comforted the driver before the emergency services arrived. Finally, in this award, there's Julia Noble and Claire Durham, St. Leonard's Church, Sherford English. They were concerned at the impact of lockdown on people who normally use St. Leonard's. The two church wardens decided that some sort of gathering still needed to take place, so put together a regular service, but made sure they kept to government guidelines. Pews held two people, one at either end, and service booklets were covered in plastic, along with a host of other measures they put in place. To announce the winner, please welcome from Paris Smith, Head of Business Development, Sue Murphy. The winners are two people who acted with remarkable calmness in the face of an emergency. Their actions no doubt saved a life. They are Martin Hansel and Tim Brennan. The next award is for Young Hero, sponsored by Apex Prime Care. The finalists are Nala Stones is a Hampshire student who has raised hundreds of pounds for charity after setting up her own business in the pandemic. Nala, a performing arts student at Barton Peveril Sixth Form College in Eastleigh, started out making protective face masks for friends and family. This prompted the student to create Nala Bear's Boutique, which sells handcrafted bespoke face masks. She's raised over £370 for nearby charities whilst also helping residents in the area to protect themselves from COVID-19. Nancy Bastin is a young girl who won the admiration of paramedics after they were called to attend a friend who had become unconscious while playing at a park. Nancy, who was nine years old at the time, carried out checks on the girl and then put her into a recovery position before trying to raise the alarm. Nancy was commended by the paramedics attending the incident for both her quick thinking and knowing what to do in dealing with an unconscious child. Nancy said that she was only doing what she had learned at Cubs during the first age training the previous week. To announce the winner, let me hand you over to Chief Operating Officer of Apex Prime Care, Ben Patrick. We have supported Young Hero Awards before, and I have to say this year was exceptional for some of the nominations that were received. After a very difficult decision was made, the winner is someone who showed selfless bravery while being so young. The winner is Nancy Bassett. The emergency services, we take them for granted and yet they are an essential part of all our lives in one way or another. For me, my mother needed the emergency services. She had a terrible heart attack. The police, the ambulance service and the emergency services, once we got her into hospital, saved my mother's life. And 10 years on, she's still with us. So for me, I know what they mean. So now our final category, and once again, I'm sure you'll be pleased to see who's introducing them. Hi, it's Kate Bliss here. I'm sure you'll know me best from my exploits on TV's Bargain Hunt and other antique shows. I'm so honoured to be asked to introduce the final category in these awards, Everyday Heroes. Among the charities I support in my home county of Herefordshire is the Little Princess Trust, and I know only too well what a trying time it has been for them. Anyone who has helped a charity through fundraising, volunteering, or has been a key worker over these past many months has my admiration. We probably all know someone who does amazing things out of the goodness of their heart, or because they just have a passion for what they do. Well, they are the types of heroes who have been shortlisted right here. A fantastic well done to you all. Let me introduce you to the category sponsor. As Managing Director at Southern Water, 
I'm pleased to be here today on behalf of all of my colleagues. At Southern Water, we engage with customers every day to provide essential services. We know just how important it is to support everyone in our community, making sure that we care for all our customers, particularly those who may be vulnerable. We are therefore very proud to support the Hampshire Heroes Awards by sponsoring the Everyday Hero category. When we look across our community, we can see that people have been working hard in difficult circumstances in all kinds of roles over the past year. Lots of ordinary people have been carrying out extraordinary work. Many have been providing support to make sure that the community can access vital resources each and every day, around the clock, despite all the challenges that we're currently facing. By honouring the winners today, we are also celebrating all those who have done so much valuable work in their daily lives throughout this difficult time. Their outstanding efforts are appreciated by all of us, and they are truly heroes. We have also sponsored the first award in this category, which is for the best key worker. I will hand over to Bill to tell you about the shortlisted candidates. The finalists are Andrew Connolly Spa. Andrew owns three local convenience stores, which during the last year have all stepped up like no other local store. When the first lockdown happened, they immediately started free deliveries to anyone self-isolating or simply didn't want to go out to the shop. The entire team of staff worked long hours to make sure everyone in the community was kept safe whilst in store and they had everything they needed. The stores even brought big 25 kilogram bags of flour and weighed it out so everyone had some when shortages hit. They did this with eggs and toilet roll as well. They teamed up with the local care agency to make sure people were not forgotten. The stores also started a food bank for the local community. Sarah Matlin, Winklebury Federation of Schools, we are told Sarah has gone over and beyond in these strange circumstances, both as a head teacher and as a boss. She has worked all hours, day and night, to ensure the children and staff are well looked after. She even went to the address of all 300 plus children personally to deliver a little treat and to make sure that they were all doing okay. Hannah Coral, Ben Delecki, Sarah Criddle, Osborne School, Winchester. Hannah, Ben and Sarah led Rubik's Cube Singing Group and Makaton Choir at Osborne School, Winchester. Osborne School is a secondary school and college for young people with special needs. The groups have not been able to meet and sing and perform together for a year. In order that these groups could continue, Ben, Sarah and Hannah gave up 45 minutes of their own time every Monday evening to bring the young people together on Zoom and have fun singing and signing with a recorded spectacular at the end of each term. Now to announce the winner, let me hand you back to the Managing Director of Southern Water, Rob Barnett. I'm proud to present the Best Key Worker Award. The award recognises someone who's shown dedication and determination in providing valuable services to his local community. The winner of this award has been running his family business of local convenience stores for over 60 years. When the pandemic began, he and his team provided a free delivery service to anyone self-isolating or not able to go to the shops. He also set up a food bank and then provided free lunches to people in need. The convenience stores have become the hub of the communities they serve and the staff who work there go above and beyond. The winner of Best Key Worker Award is Andrew Colony. Now on to our second award in this category, which is for Unsung Heroes, sponsored by Barnstore. The finalists are Lisa Carter. This lady by herself started cleaning up Totten, and now she has quite a few helpers. They have made an amazing job of cleaning the street, 
picking up litter, cans, and other undesirable objects. Her nominator was someone with a mobility condition who praised Lisa for the difference she had made to the ease of walking with her dog. She said, because of Lisa, Totten is now getting to look lovely, well-kept, and most of all, somewhere you could be proud to live. Haley Jarvis, Baby Necessity, Southampton. Haley set up a baby bank for the Southampton area in the middle of the pandemic and alongside her job working in clinical trials, as well as raising two young children. Realising there was nothing like this, the uptake for this service was huge. She worked tirelessly getting together items for families in need, fundraising and registering the project as a charity. Without all Haley's hard work, deprived families in the city and surrounding areas wouldn't have access to the essential items they need for their babies. Lara Tarrant. Lara from Kingsworthy has put her heart into growing a recycling group and encouraging people to share useful items. She uses social media and one of her Facebook groups has over 400 members where she collects and sorts out various hard to recycle package products from local people to send in bulk to specialist recycling company TerraCycle. She also collects clothes and bedding which are distributed to various refuges and aluminium, plus old cables which in turn raise money for the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance. Also, during lockdown, she organised a community book swap system with a covered bookcase outside her house. And her I Need a Whisk group, which was recently set up, already has over a thousand members. This is a group for local people to use if they want to borrow anything or have things to give away to anyone in the local community. Barnes Store could not be with us today, so let's ask our category sponsor to return to announce the winner. Our winner is someone who cares about the environment we all live in and does something about it. She is Lisa Carter. Now, just before I introduce the sponsor, let me say my farewell, as I'm going to ask Simon to sign this event off in a moment. I'll ask you to hang on to the very end though, as we have a bit of a surprise for all those who are nominated. And I could not let this moment go without adding my own personal thanks to Simon Weston, who's been so generous with his time. I hope you'll agree he's made these awards that extra special for us. If you've got a team you wish to inspire, I promise you he comes highly recommended. So let me introduce the penultimate award of the event. This award is for Best Fundraiser, sponsored by Richard Steele and Partners. The finalists are Jessica Giles. Give a Little was founded at the end of November 2020 by Jessica Giles. Jessica could see how some of her friends were struggling in the lead up to Christmas with no money for children's gifts, never mind the full Christmas spread. She set up a local community Facebook group where others could offer up any toys their children had outgrown to be re-gifted for the festive period. Almost immediately, the numbers of members on the page trebled and everyone got into the spirit of giving. Then there's Hayley Binstead, Managing Director of Board in the City. Board in the City is a community interest company and Managing Director Hayley Binstead is the driver. During COVID, she has manned helplines, raised money for food and fed vulnerable families. She supports the local community pantry at no cost, has ensured the homeless have somewhere to live and protected her volunteers and staff. She spends her spare time, what little she has, in helping the vulnerable to attend appointments, access resources such as housing support, mental health or debt, arranging training and supporting people into work. She supported ex-offenders to learn to read and get into work and never turns anyone away. And she does all this while desperately trying to save the community cafe 
so that she can keep supporting as many people as possible after we are over this pandemic. We are told there are people who genuinely owe their lives to her. Finally, Jan Wild. Jan is a member of the children's reception team at Hampshire County Council. She's also the lead fun organizer. She's arranged countless fundraising activities to earn plenty of money for charity. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Jan arranged a group of volunteers to make face masks and scrub bags for nurses, medical staff and care staff across the Hampshire area. She sourced material, packaging and manpower and distributed these items to settings within the local area, all free of charge. At a time when PPE was not readily available, Jan was able to help ensure the safety and well-being of some of our frontline key workers at a critical time. To tell you who the winner is, let me introduce you to one of the directors at Richard Steele & Partners, Ian Steele. Richard Steele & Partners, the family-owned funeral directors, have been serving Winchester and the wider Hampshire area since 1860. Community is therefore very important to us. With four generations of my family supporting a number of local charities over the past 160 years. This Best Fundraiser Award was therefore a natural fit for the Steele family to sponsor. Our winner is someone who identified a real issue for the community and came up with a creative way of helping all those who wanted to take part. And the winner is Jessica Giles. We are almost done. But even in such excellent company, there is always someone who stands out from the crowd. Well, you will not be surprised that the same is true for these awards. There has been one person who has stood out above all others. And in the great tradition of these things, we have saved the very best until last. So I would like to invite our principal sponsor to return to the screen to announce our hero of the year. This person is a local man who suffers from MS and supports children who are in need of technology. He is an RAF veteran and is constantly on the lookout for laptops, which he asks the community to donate in any condition, which he then spends hours refurbishing and making good for children who are in need of technology and working at home. These children may have needed laptops during lockdown or for homework or because they're not able to get into school for different reasons. Unfortunately, the government were not able to provide technology for all children in need, and so that is where our winner stepped in. So far this year, he has helped over 60 children. He really deserves recognition for this amazing effort. He really is an angel, and the smiles on the children's faces when they receive a laptop of their own is incredible. He asks for nothing at all, but just wants to see these children happy and able to learn. I am incredibly proud to announce the Hampshire Hero of the Year Award goes to David Harper. Thank you for watching these awards today. They will continue to be available to view on Facebook, so do tell your friends. We also thank all those who took time and trouble to nominate. And as I said at the beginning, they will not be forgotten. That's why we thought you might like to see their names in this role of honour. Good night, stay safe.